Hello, uh, in this lecture we will be talking about turbulent flows. So, uh, in the previous weeks we have done lot of analysis and in most of the cases we were looking at laminar flows and we briefly discussed for example, when the flow is going to be turbulent. Uh, the turbulent flow is uh, very uh, statistical that means, it is uh, the flow is very random. So, all the equations that we solve it might not be possible to obtain such uh, clean solutions for turbulent flows or at least there is no such solution available for turbulent flows. So, in this module we will be looking at briefly what is turbulence, what are the important features of turbulence and some uh, important topics for example, uh, of what is uh, the velocity profile for turbulent flow in a pipe and, uh, and then how we can uh, obtain the quantities of engineering interest in a turbulent flow. So, when we talked about turbulent flows, we said uh, that if the Reynolds number is greater than a certain value, then the flow is uh, observed to be a turbulent flow. In, in So, for example, when we say uh, flow in a pipe, we say uh, somewhere around Reynolds number 2000, 2100 and 2300, the flow becomes turbulent. For a boundary layer over a flat plate where the pressure gradient in the outer flow was 0, we said that somewhere around 5 into 10 raise to the power 5 or 3 into 10 raise to the power 5 of that order Reynolds number, where Reynolds number is Rex, the, the flow is observed to be turbulent. And similarly, uh, for flow over a sphere uh, at, at a Reynolds number is uh, of Re 10, 3 into 10 raise to the power 5 flow is observed to be turbulent. But with all these limits, we always said that if the if the flow is smooth, if the free if the flow is free from disturbances. So that means the turbulence depends on the uh, disturbances that are there in the flow. Now, uh, when when we talk about any flow uh, which is happening practically. Uh, uh, we, we will see that there are certain disturbances in the flow. For example, if there is flow in pipe, there will be disturbances because of the, the pumping system, uh, oscillations in the pumping mechanism, some vibrations in the pipe, uh, environment, uh, the exit boundary condition or uh, there can be number of factors that can give rise to fluctuations. And these fluctuations, if they grow, then the flow will eventually become unstable and uh, these, uh, the unstable flow will give rise to secondary motions and these secondary motions will further give rise to more uh, uh, unstable flows. So, all that can cause or all that causes the flow to be turbulent. Now, when the Reynolds number is low, these disturbances are dissipated or they are damped by the viscous effects. So, until the viscous effects is dominating, then the flow remains laminar and when these uh, uh, viscous effect is not able to damp out the disturbances in the flow, then the flow starts becoming turbulent. Okay. So, if we say that what causes or how do we define the flow to be turbulent, uh, we often use the word adage. And, and with adage what we say or what we relate is recirculation. So, whenever we say uh, when we see a recirculating flow, uh, we, we say that the flow or uh, some of us uh, try to think which is not correct that whenever there is a recirculation in the flow, flow is turbulent. Or uh, other thing is that when the flow is unsteady, then some people might or uh, there, there might be a wrong notion that uh, if the flow is unsteady, then the flow is turbulent. So, the turbulent flow is not characterized by, uh, by the recirculations or, or the unsteadiness. 
but what defines turbulence is the turbulence itself. So, if we look at the uh, literal meaning of word turbulence which is basically uh, the, the randomness, the chaos when, when we say in English that uh, turbulent times that means uh, uh, there is nothing in order, uh, there is lot of chaos, so there is lot of randomness. So, similarly if we talk about a flow and if we take a probe and measure let us say u component or, or the x component of velocity with time and if we get such a behavior where we cannot say anything about the velocity with respect to time. If you have a velocity something like this which appears to be sinusoidal or you can decompose into some sinusoidal components in, in a definite manner. Of course, any signal you can decompose using Fourier series into sinusoidal components, but what I am talking about that if flow is periodic then uh, it is not turbulent. So, turbulent is basically defined by, by the randomness and when there is randomness uh, the, the, there will be fluctuations. So, your flow is always fluctuating, uh, it might be fluctuating about a mean. So, that will be your mean velocity or mean flow velocity. So, that is the main, main characteristic. The flow will be when we have these fluctuations. So, these fluctuations will give rise to a uh, three dimensional motion. So, the turbulence is always three dimensional of course, when there are fluctuations, fluctuations means the velocity is changing with time. When velocity changes with time, uh, you will have a u component as well as v component, w component. So, you might have one uh, mean uh, flow. So, for example, if the flow is happening in a pipe, uh, it will be the axial direction in which the flow will be dominant. So, you will have dominant u component or x component of velocity, but you will also have fluctuations which will be uh, which will give you the velocity magnitude uh, or some certain magnitude for uh, v and w component that is uh, the r or r and theta component of velocity in a pipe. So, turbulent is three dimensional, uh, there are fluctuations, so it is of course unsteady and, and then uh, the randomness which defines uh, the turbulent behavior. When the velocity is changing, one velocity component is changing with time and you will have other velocity components also changing as well as the pressure will also fluctuate with time. So, what I have plotted here or I have shown here is for u component of velocity, but if you uh, if you take or if you measure v component of velocity or the w component of velocity or if you measure pressure with time all will give you uh, uh, similar signals. <coughs> now, uh, as I said that uh, the turbulence happens because the fluctuations that are there in the flow they, they grow, they are not dissipated by the uh, viscous forces or they are not damped by the viscous forces. Uh, so, uh, when that happens then the flow starts becoming turbulent. So, if, if you are able to make your system free of fluctuations, then you might observe that the uh, all these numbers might be quite bigger. So, for example, people have observed that the uh, for a fairly large Reynolds number of the order of 10 raise to the power 4 or 10 raise to the power 5, uh, the flow in a pipe can remain turbulent subject to the condition that you can achieve the flow that is free from all the disturbances. So, we talked about that the uh, one of the important properties of turbulence is randomness. Now, when you have these fluctuating components, then you can always define a, a mean flow and then you can define the fluctuations in the flow which is uh, u minus u mean and similar things you could do uh, for other components. So, uh, so, for the analysis because when, when we are interested uh, for engineering in, in the engineering flows, then most of the time uh, uh, our interest is or focus is more into the mean quantities of the flow uh, or, or the mean velocities, uh, mean pressure, 
uh, not not so much on the fluctuations especially in uh, in, in the engineering so you can define uh, the mean uh, over a certain time period uh, that t average uh, 1 over t average integral from t to t plus t average u dt dash so t dash it just to uh, differentiate uh, uh, this variable t from the variable uh, in the limit so that's why we have uh, the t dash here so basically that you can take any time because it is the mean velocity so uh, the starting time you could take any time t and t plus t average okay so you will get or uh, you will be able to decompose the uh, velocity in mean and fluctuating components same thing you could do for all the velocity components and and pressure now uh, the time interval it's such that the averaging is done for a sufficiently long time so you are averaging the fluctuations over a, uh, averaging a number of fluctuations so uh, the the averaging time is sufficiently large when you compare with the time of fluctuations okay uh, however this time it is sufficiently or it is it is smaller than the than the flow time or the characteristic time of the flow so uh, or or if you are talking about chemical engineering then then the process time scale so uh, the average time is an intermediate time scale which is larger than the uh, fluctuation time scale or sufficiently larger than the fluctuation time scale so it actually do represent the mean flow of of your system and uh, it it should be sufficiently smaller than than the flow time so if there is unsteadiness in your flow so for example if you if you plot a flow where your fluctuations are something like this so you mean might go somewhere like this so that means that uh, your mean flow can also be a function of time however if you take mean of fluctuating component then it will be zero so that this decomposition that decomposition of the velocity and pressure in mean and fluctuating components this is called a uh, reynolds decomposition after after uh, reynolds now when we decompose this and uh, we will see that we can write down the uh, conservation equations for the mean flow and how do we characterize the fluctuations so that can be done using uh, this quantity which is uh, half of u dash square plus v dash square plus w dash square and it is known as turbulent kinetic energy so know uh, know that or just observe that uh, k it is called turbulent kinetic energy but there is no rho here so uh, the unit here will be uh, meter square per second square so uh, in analogy with the kinetic energy it has half rho u half u uh, dash square plus v dash square plus w dash square but there is no rho and that is uh, uh, that defines uh, the intensity of turbulence or or uh, turbulent kinetic energy now uh, so let us briefly talk about what are the features of turbulence so uh, one feature we just discussed that uh, the randomness is what define uh, turbulence so the flow is regular you cannot find or uh, or until now people have not been able to find an order in turbulence then uh, diffusivity so as a chemical engineer turbulent flows are uh, are a good news for me because i do not need any uh, extra means of mixing so diffusivity means because uh, the turbulence is associated with lot of eddies so you have eddies of all the dimensions and that those eddies are basically the the recirculations in the flow so when you have recirculations in the flow there is lot of cross stream mixing so you have a mixing between the laminar unlike laminar flow you could have a cross stream mixing in turbulent flow so that gives rise to uh, uh, that momentum 
is diffused, uh, heat is diffused and the mass is diffused. So, if you want to do a reaction where you want your uh, reactant to mix or reactant and product to mix, if the flow is turbulent then because of turbulence itself the flow will be mixed. Now, diffusivity when we talk about for a, in the laminar flows it is molecular diffusivity uh, and, and uh, for momentum we say that nu is uh, momentum diffusivity. the unit if we find uh, meter square per second. So, if you do not remember what is nu, it is kinematic viscosity and mu over rho. So, that basically defines that how uh, fast the momentum can be diffused in, in a laminar flow. In a similar manner, there is another quantity that is defined turbulent diffusivity, but that is not something like molecular diffusivity you can you can derive the relations for uh, molecular diffusivity from kinetic uh, theory and all but but that is not so for turbulent fluid is property of turbulent diffusivity is in analogy with the uh, with the molecular diffusivity so uh, we can say that this is molecular diffusivity so the turbulent diffusivity is the property of the flow unlike molecular diffusivity which is the property of the fluid at a particular temperature. Okay. Then we already know that it is associated with large Reynolds numbers. So, large Reynolds numbers means the inertial effects are dominating and viscous effects are not so large when you compare with the inertial effects. So, and that is because when the viscous effects are relatively smaller or uh, the relatively lower in magnitude, then they will not be able to damp out the fluctuations in the flow. So, uh, so the turbulent flow is always at larger Reynolds numbers. Now, how large and what what does this large mean is depends on case to case basis. Uh, there are different values for different kind of flows and also depends on how do you define your Reynolds number. Now, uh, the other thing is that turbulent flow has uh, three dimensional vorticity fluctuations. So, uh, when we talk about eddies there are recirculations, so the flow is uh, circulations. So, uh, there is vorticity present in the flow and these fluctuations are three dimensional. So, uh, it may be possible that in some simple cases uh, you may have uh, uh, the, the primary flow may have uh, just two dimensional vorticity and this two dimensional vorticity when, when, when the flow becomes unstable it may give rise to secondary uh, uh, flow and the secondary flow will be uh, through three dimensional and the phenomena like vortex stretching etcetera happens which uh, make the flow three dimensional. Then, Another feature of turbulent flow is dissipation. In the turbulent flows because you have fluctuations and you need energy for this. So, turbulent uh, flow needs a constant source of energy and this energy you have a number of scales present in the flow and the largest scale will be the, the scale of your system in which you are looking at the flow and the smallest scale what we call Kolmogorov scales. So, uh, a, and the energy transfer from the larger scale to smaller scale and at the smallest possible scale which we will discuss in a few minutes that the, the energy is dissipated and this dissipation happens because of the viscous effects and, and this the, the energy of the flow is dissipated in terms of heat. So, uh, uh, dissipation is another feature of turbulent flows. And the, the last feature uh, the continuum. So, that means that uh, the, the scales it, it passage a number of scales, but scales the smallest scales are not so small that you cannot assume that it is not continuum it is not down to the molecular level. So, the smallest possible scales as we will discuss that they, they are uh, where, where the dissipation 
a viscous dissipation balances uh, the the energy or or the energy of the flow is uh, dissipated. Okay. So or uh, the inertia at the smallest scale is balanced by the viscous effects. Okay. So that is the smallest possible scale. So you can still uh, consider uh, or that the flow is continuum. Now, so as we said that uh, when we decompose the flow in the mean and uh, uh, fluctuating components, then we can uh, substitute the velocity in terms of, so we can write a velocity vector v is equal to say v mean plus v dash, so which all of them are vectors. So, if we substitute these in the governing equations of a flow, when we talk about governing equation for a incompressible isothermal flow, we talk about continuity and mass conservation equations. So, <coughs> when we substitute it and then we can average those equations and those that averaging it what is called uh, Reynolds averaging after uh, Reynolds. So, uh, he obtained the averaged equations for mean flow. So, after the averaging is done, you obtain such equations. Now, first thing you might notice here that we have replaced the velocity v with v bar. So, these are all uh, in the vector form. So, the equations are for mean flow. Now, because we are interested in the mean velocity and uh, mean pressure components. The continuity equation for an incompressible flow looks similar to what we had for, uh, for, for velocity v. So, it is del dot v bar fine. Now, if you look at the momentum conservation equation, there is uh, one more term or one extra term that has appeared here you have uh, the acceleration term on the left hand side and then you have a uh, uh, pressure gradient again where you have a uh, mean pressure and, and the gravity term and, and the viscous term. But an additional term has appeared here which is uh, minus rho v dash v dash and v dash you can see here that v dash is the fluctuations. So, if you look at this it is like rho into v into v that means it is kind of momentum flux and it will have units of uh, say Pascal which is uh, units of uh, stress also. So, this is known as uh, say turbulent stress or there is a specific name for it after Reynolds is called Reynolds stress and it is a symmetric tensor. You can expand it in the in the components rho u dash u dash rho u v u dash v dash and so on. So, it basically if you look at these two equations in these two equations everywhere we have only mean quantities v bar and p bar. The only place where we have the fluctuations coming into in this term which is the, the Reynolds stress. So, it basically represents the uh, what that what is the effects of these fluctuations in the mean flow. So, because this uh, terms looks like a stress, so it is termed as uh, uh, a mean uh, or the it terms it is termed as Reynolds stress or, or the turbulent stress and it causes an additional stress in the uh, mean flow. Uh, that is your uh, equations for the mean flow after be done after doing Reynolds averaging. Now, <coughs> if you want to solve this system of equations, we had a uh, two equations if you write the velocity in the vector form. So, you have continuity equation for the mean flow and the momentum conservation equation for the mean flow and you have uh, two unknowns u bar or, or, or v bar which is a velocity vector and p bar uh, the, uh, the, the pressure. So, p bar is mean pressure and v bar is mean velocity, but you also have an additional term that comes in. Uh, uh, minus rho v dash v dash uh, averaged. So, the bar over the quantity represents the average as, as we saw earlier. 
Now, when this comes into picture, then we do not know the fluctuations. So, if we do not know the fluctuating velocity field, how to find this? That is the question because, uh, because this is an additional unknown and we have only two systems of equations for mean flow. Now, the system of equations is not closed. So, uh, like uh, we, we could or uh, people have written the equation of change for this Reynolds sister cells also, but they are further uh, functions of rho v dash v dash v dash. So, uh, the components like uh, uh, minus rho u dash v dash w dash and rho uh, uh, the, the average of uh, u dash u dash w dash and so on. So, you will have more unknowns coming into picture. And uh, you, you have, uh, I mean to eliminate one unknown, you have brought into another unknown and this will keep going on. So, finally, we have to cut down somewhere and find a closure relationship. Why we are talking about or why, why we do say closure relationship? Because we had uh, two equations, continuity for mean flow and the momentum conservation for the mean flow, but we had three unknowns. Uh, the mean velocity, mean pressure and the Reynolds stress. So, uh, there is an additional variable and we need one more equation to close this system of equations so that the system of equations can be solved. And there does not appear to be any fundamental relationship uh, which uh, by which we can represent. For example, uh, the, the same problem came when we talk about uh, laminar flows or when we derive Navier-Stokes equation and then uh, the constitutive equation for a Newtonian fluid or for a non-Newtonian fluid came into picture where we related uh, the, the shear stress or the stress with uh, the, the velocity gradient. So, stress was represented in terms of velocity gradient for a Newtonian fluid we wrote tau is equal to minus mu du by dy or, or, or its expanded form for three dimensional flow. Now, there is no such thing here uh, fundamentally. So, uh, this system of equations is not closed. As a result, uh, there has been lot of effort to close this system of equations and this problem is known as closure problem of turbulence. And, uh, uh, and the uh, models that have been developed to close this system of equations, all that comes under turbulence modeling. Okay. So, we will not go into detail of turbulence modeling, there are number of books and, and, uh, and material available on in literature where you could go, go and look at uh, uh, what are the different turbulence models for example, k epsilon model, k omega model uh, uh, which are present to solve such kind of uh, or to, to find out the mean flow. Okay. So, the other thing that we will talk about today is uh, the Kolmogorov scales. So, as I said that the energy transfers in a cascaded manner in the, uh, uh, in the turbulent flows. So, the turbulent flows have a number of time and length scales and that is why when you are solving for turbulent flows, if you are using CFD, then it will not be possible. To, uh, to capture all the scales that are present in the flow uh, until you, you have very small grid size and very small uh, time steps. So, when, when because you solve it in a discrete manner, so grid size is basically when uh, you divide your control volume or your uh, a flow, a region of interest in number of smaller volumes and, uh, and then solve the system of equations there and then uh, solve those algebraic equations and, and if you if it the flow is unsteady then you solve in a unsteady manner. So, uh, the, the smallest volume that you need to resolve the all the scales in the flow all the gradients that are present in the flow plus the smallest time scale by which you can smallest time step by which you can uh, capture all the uh, possible time scales in the flow is very large. So, uh, that is why we uh, use in, in most of the engineering applications that mean flow equations 
and uh, the, the turbulence modeling is used to close the system of equations. Now, uh, the question comes that can we identify or can we find that what are the scales present or at least can we find out what is the largest possible scale and what is the smallest possible scale. So, we can know that uh, what is the range of a scale present in a particular flow. So, the size of largest uh, eddy or largest scale present in the flow or uh, uh, the, the eddies which are of the uh, of different sizes, the largest eddy can be of the size of your system itself. So, that is determined by the system size. Now, uh, from these largest uh, ADs, you will have the energy being transferred which is called energy cascading energy is being transferred from the largest AD to the smaller ADs. Now, so uh, when that happens, uh, there is this uh, quote from uh, Richardson uh, ab about a century ago which says that big worlds have little worlds that feed onto their velocity and little worlds have lit lesser worlds and so on to viscosity. So, that suggests that the energy goes from largest vortices or from the largest eddies to the smaller eddies and so on that goes on until the energy is dissipated. So, when it goes to smallest possible scale uh, and the small at the smaller scale viscosity is dominant enough that it can dissipate the the, the energy that is there in the flow. So, in the smaller eddies these viscous effects become important and, and this kinetic energy is converted to heat. And based on dimensional arguments, Kolmogorov suggested that the, the rate of energy dissipation, uh, we can relate that what is the smallest size of eddies with the properties of the fluid which are for uh, for a isothermal uh, flow uh, mu and rho which is viscosity and density. Uh, so, uh, he suggested that the size of the smallest eddies it depends on the rate of energy dissipation which is represented by epsilon and energy uh, we, we just talked about kinetic energy is meter square per second squared. Uh, the fluctuations uh, half u dash square plus v dash square plus w dash square and the rate of this energy dissipation will be meter square per second square divided by second. So, this is meter square per second q and it depends on the fluid properties. So, two fluid properties we can combine them together in, uh, in the form of nu which is mu by rho. So, the unit of this will be meter square per second square. So, using dimensional arguments, he said that we can construct or we can find the size of the smallest eddies using these two quantities uh, using k and epsilon. So, now basically what he did that using epsilon and nu, he constructed uh, the length scale of the eddies, time scale of the eddies and from that you can also find the velocity scale of the eddies. So, if you look at the units. Uh, nu is meter square per second square and this is meter square per second cube. So, we can try to construct a length scale let us say L k. Now, if we look at this and we want a unit which is in, in the units of meter, here we have meter square per second square, meter square per second cube. So, the unit of nu is meter square per second. Now, what we could do? We could eliminate second and then we will be able to find a an expression in terms of only meter raised to the some power n and then we can uh, do uh, 1 over n and find the length scale. So, if we look at these two, how we can cancel to find a length scale? Uh, because this is second and here we have second cube. So, what we could do is we could write nu over epsilon. So, nu is meter square per second, but we want uh, second to be cancelled. So, we can say nu cube. So, the units will become 
meter raised to the power 4. So, if this is meter raised to the power 4, then we can say that meter is this raised to the power 1 by 4. So, L k is basically nu cube upon epsilon raised to the power 1 by 4. Now, we can similarly try to find a time scale. So, uh, to find the time scale, what we will need to do is we can eliminate meter squared and then see that what do we get in terms of seconds and then change the exponent. So, we need seconds. So, what we could do is we can write down nu divided by epsilon. So, the unit of nu is meter squared divided by second and epsilon is meter squared divided by second cube. So, when you do that meter square will cancel out and what you will end up it with is second raised to the power 2. So, the time scale will be this raised to the power half. So, my time scale will be T k is equal to nu by epsilon raised to the power 1 by 2. Now, we can also construct a velocity scale. So, for constructing a velocity scale, let us say we call it u k and we need that the uh, that the power of m and s are same and opposite. So, meter raised to the power m, uh, m raised to the power n and second raised to the power minus n and that can be done. If you look at uh, meter square per second cube and meter square per second. So, if you multiply them, so epsilon into nu, the unit will be meter squared divided by second into meter squared by second cube. So, meter square, so that will become meter raised to the power 4, second raised to the power 4. So, we can simply change this to meter raised to the power 4, second raised to the power 4 and we need meter per second. So, this raised to the power 1 by 4. So, this is our velocity scale. So, these are the smallest possible scales, uh, the length, velocity and time scales in a turbulent flow and you can see that they depends on epsilon that is rate of dissipation of turbulent energy and uh, the fluid property is nu. So, nu will be a constant for a fluid for a, at a particular temperature and uh, the epsilon will depend on your flow. So, that gives you uh, an indication or that tells you what is the smallest possible scale in the flow. So, uh, if we summarize what we have discussed in this lecture that we, we looked at that what is turbulent flow and it is correct what characterizes the turbulent flow, how we can identify if the flow is turbulent and the main characteristic we discussed that it is randomness behavior or the randomness that characterizes turbulent. Then we looked at uh, that we can decompose the uh, velocity and pressure in terms of mean and fluctuating quantities and uh, then we can write down or we can use uh, averaging uh, so that we can find the continuity and uh, uh, momentum equations for mean flow and these equations for mean flow had an additional term, the momentum equation had an additional term which is like a momentum flux or a stress. So, which is called Reynolds stress and that that becomes that defining this prob, uh, this Reynolds stress in terms of mean quantities that is known as closure problem of turbulence 
and then we talked about that what are the uh, uh, range of scales in a flow and the largest possible scale is the, the size of the system and the smallest possible scale we, we saw that the Kolmogorov scales which are the smallest possible scale where the, uh, the energy is dissipated energy of the smallest scale can be dissipated by the viscous effects or by the viscosity. So, we will stop here. Thank you.